shelter. It comes up in, in everyone's talk, and I, um, I think we can't focus enough on it, regardless of the economy, regardless of the state of a country. Land is valuable, and land that's been affected by a disaster is going to become even more um, of an issue. In Japan, one of the issues of building back was the government can't decide should they build to the old tsunami line or the new tsunami line. Mm -hmm. If it's the new tsunami line, they've lost 10 miles in on 400 kilometers of, of coastline. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just profound. So the issue of where you build back um, is, is incredibly critical, and building back better, certainly. For the humanitarian and development communities, we have to engage with the private sector, construction firms, engineers, architects. This is definitely the, the new horizon for many, many emergency and development agencies. And it's one of the skill sets for those of you who are looking for a career in the humanitarian world. It's about being an engineer, an urban planner, an architect. Those are going to be the, the new skills like public health was 10 years ago. Uh, another issue is how do agencies and how do countries deal with international support? It's complex enough to manage it domestically with all of the, the competing needs and priorities. But internationally, um, how do we bring, deal with it? A shout out to the US government and particularly OFDA, the Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance. Post Katrina actually have worked on policies of what the US government is willing and able to, to bring in. Um, and that work is actually fairly available and, and worth a look at. Um, you know, We took in British beef, and then no one realized that there was mad cow disease, and so there were huge amounts of, of MREs from the British Army sitting in warehouses all around the United States. You know, we had to take it. Britain was a big ally, and yet, you know, so I think that uh, there is quite a lot of work that's being done, and the Red Cross is working on inter international disaster response law and guidance. Um, and there's going to be a, uh, every four years, the Red Cross and all of the, the governments that are party to the Geneva Conventions meet in Geneva to discuss issues and the strengthening of international disaster response law is high on that agenda, um, which is about 150 states coming together to talk about it. We've heard about the profound disruption on livelihoods, on economies, on schools, and of course, the most vulnerable um, continue to be made even more vulnerable. And I would urge all of us who have been working in this field for many, many years to look back at the work and the analysis that's been done on vulnerable um, populations and what has worked, because a lot has worked with handicap, with elderly, with children, with women. We know a lot. We don't have to reinvent all of the wheels. Um, and of course, um, the, the critical need to focus more on disaster mitigation, disaster reduction, and disaster preparedness. Um, the Red Cross is working with local communities everywhere. It's where it has to happen, whether it's first aid, light search and rescue, um, emergency evacuation plans, communities, whether they're urban, peri-urban, or rural, are going to um, need more and more skill sets and inputs um, and linking those, those communities into their local and national authorities. And finally, Donna, I really appreciate um, the actions and practices suggested. Um, there are opportunities inside every single disaster, and we have to seize those opportunities, whether it's about strengthening codes, revising laws, building back better. Um, but we really need to, to do that in our preparedness to say, what would we do better when something happens?